right, this morning we're going to look at uh, several movements of string quartets from Haydn and Beethoven. So the first work that we're going to look at Classical symphony. And so, as you would expect, second movement in the string quartet, this is a slow movement. And the form is theme and variations. So there are four variations in this movement. So we have looked have one other theme and variation type work, which was the last movement of the Brahms Fourth Symphony. This, of course, isn't nearly as big or as long, um, but it makes use of um, some techniques that um, have to do with variation uh, structure. And so basically the way that you look at a movement that's theme and variation is to Examine the theme and then compare each variation with the theme and what's what is the same and what's different. And so the whole idea of melodic ornamentation is basic element in, in variation techniques. Um, I talked about some of the standard classical elements that you can find in, in uh, many uh, sets by um, Mozart and Beethoven. But uh, a, a term I think I talked about already, but I'll mention this one more time, is heterophony. And this is a type of situation in which you have a melody that is presented in one voice while a second voice or more uh, gives an embellishment of that melody. So it's the melody that's sounding, and then you have an embellishment that's occurring at the same time. technique is a basic idea in this second movement of this Haydn Quartet. So this particular quartet has a nickname and this one is nicknamed Emperor. And the reason that it has this nickname is because Haydn composed this melody and this work Dates from 1797. And the theme was composed for the birthday of the Emperor Franz. And so it was entitled God Save <coughs> So that is the thing. I'll just play it. It's, it's a theme that you, I'm sure, have heard before. It's now used as a hymn. Every 
everything about this um, movement um, is very typical of the classical style. And so we want to look at some of these elements. So, so what are some um, terms that would describe the character of a slow movement in a, in a uh, in these classical work like this. So, so what are some terms? So Lauren, what's the term? The lyrical. Oh, okay, lyrical. How about the uh, the idea of emotion? Usually use terms like self imposed restraint. And there's a sense of gracefulness. As far as the phrasing, what would you expect? in a classical work. Four major periods. Yeah, and so that's what we're going to hear is that this follows four measure, closed, closing. <coughs> what would you expect as far as the texture? Homophonic. <coughs> All of these elements are present here. How about the melody, as far as the construction of the melody? Basically, conjunct, it's a stepwise conjunct. How about the rhythm? Rhythm would be something that's not complicated. It's very clear, so that, that idea of clarity is especially important in string quartet writing. So, we'll put here. Straightforward rhythms. How about the harmony? Basically, it would be diatonic. And then one of the things that, that we'll talk about here is how does Haydn organize this work as far as um, why does he have four variations? And so the way that the theme is presented is uh, top line, so the first violin has, has the melody. And we're going to see that this is in Five phrases, actually. And let's analyze this theme. So it's 20 measures long. So you have five four-measure phrases. Thank you. 
So even though it is five phrases, which is an you know, odd number, it still has this you know, sense of highest pitch being here, and these two phrases are balanced out by these two that so you have repetition at the beginning and at the end. And so all of the sound qualities just would for sure indicate that this is a, a classical work. All right. What happens in the first variation? Describe the texture for that first variation. It basically, it's the same. What's going on? So we've got two elements. One has the first violin and, and continue with 16th notes against the second violin. What's, what's sounding the second violin? Yeah, the theme. So you just have the presentation of the theme against an embellishment. It's the, the embellishment is based on the harmony. The embellishment is very disjunct in comparison to the theme. Um, you have uh, some more contrast just with the articulation, so it's uh, a lot of it is uh, staccato. And does that continue for the whole variation? Yes, it does. So one, one basic technique that you'll find in string quartet writing is the pairing of instruments. A lot of times the violins will be paired as, as a unit against the viola and the cello. Um, and it, it might be a situation where it's a phrase by phrase kind of pairing. In this particular instance, this is the entire variation. Yeah, those two, while the, the viola and the cello rest. One thing, too, that you'll hear in this is a little bit um, more chromaticism, but it's not a harmonic chromaticism. It's a melodic chromaticism. So you'll have some chromatic passing tones or neighbor tones in it, and that makes it sound expressive. Same number of phrases, same basic harmonic progression, um, same placement of the sport sandi. Um, basically, it's just a, a melodic embellishment in one voice against a, a restatement of the theme. What does it look like happens in variation two? Okay, and so that 
has shifted. Uh, actually, no, that's the same. So it's still cut time. Look at look at the, each of the voices and, and uh, make a comment on on what's happening. Yeah, cello has the melody. And the first phrase, basically, you have um, some use of suspension patterns in the first violin and some in the second violin as well. And the viola is just providing harmony tones in this, so the viola doesn't have as much of a melodic function in this variation. So again, the, uh, the two violins are, are, uh, are paired together, the more active with the top part being even uh, more than the second. But basically everything else is the same. So you hear the melody in the cello. Mm -hmm. So in the first variation we saw was just two voices, violin giving a continuous sixteenth note embellishment. It's based on the harmony. Variation two has the theme in the cello. All four are participating, but violin one 